about about eight months into my first job as a junior animator at DreamWorks, DreamWorks Interactive, I was actually working on a run cycle, a very fundamental basic thing that every game animator game animator does. So the the dinosaur would just run across the screen from left to right, and the programmer, the our lead programmer, had designed a system that allows that same animation to be flipped so that it could run from right to left. And for the first time, I, when I started to play around with that switch that did the trick, I noticed something very unusual in that at the moment that f that switch was, was uh, uh, flipped, the character would do this wild turn in the middle of, like on a dime, literally, and then head to the, to the opposite direction. For me, it was a revelation. It was, I, I realized that, wait a minute, I didn't animate any of those things. In fact, the motion, though it was a little comical, it was almost believable because the character was light enough to execute it if that was the case in real life. And yet I did not animate it. And the interesting thing was I could flip that switch any time, no matter where, what, how he was, uh, at what, any moment in his life, I could switch, flip the switch. For me, that was an immediate entry into a mindset, which was about a live medium as opposed to a medium that is printed on film or printed and put away. That interactivity was for me an extremely compelling story for myself and I, I would use that as an excuse to convert many animators into the into the medium because uh, there, for, in that there lied, uh, there lay a lot of strength. It was actually <coughs> my favorite which is artificial intelligence. To me that represented the third element in animation, and this was a this is a pri this was a private thought, but it occurred to me that it was basically animation at this point till then was for me space and time, like acting, and over a period of time, that was what it was. But with AI, it gave me a third axis to deal with, and that's uh, intelligence. So the role of the animator would be to not just create space and time, but also create the illusion of intelligence in his, in his uh, not just in the acting, but also in the way it is designed into the system. Because as you know, games are all about the, the player interacting with your live actor. So it's, uh, that was extremely compelling as a cause to take. And that single singular thought was very foundational for me to stick into video games. There were some very interesting opportunities to, for me to actually leave the video game industry in, at early stages. But this was so powerful for me that it f gave me a lot of spiritual strength and a lot of conviction that, <clears throat> that this is something that was not being explored enough and it was something that gave me uh, a lot of motivation to continue. Yeah. More recently, there has been a new shift, a new world shift, and it is, this is just outrageous to actually witness a second one in within a very short period of time, and uh, and I, I don't believe I'm alone in saying this. In that, uh, it is the web that obviously has has caused the shift, especially the user-defined web, the web 2.0, and that is doing something that makes video games seem a little archaic, believe it or not, and that is user-defined content. The moment the user is, uh, is is so it's one thing to witness on the screen something that the user can control and change, as in video games. And the second thing is where the user actually creates the content for the medium. And that the, what what that is doing is, uh, in my opinion, every kid from the age of twelve and up or twelve and and earlier has is actually a brand new human being. Because I don't believe in any time in history this kind of accessibility had been allowed. Um, the, the, you know, where the user defines journalism, the user defines his banking style, the user defines the news he, he chooses to read, the user defines his profile, the user defines his club of friends around, and his social network. And uh, pretty much all aspects of his, uh, of his life is, is customized to his taste with big companies creating components to allow him to define himself. Now, this is how does that deal with entertainment? For, 
it, it is doing a, an extraordinary, uh, it's actually causing the, uh, the entire games industry, all the movies industry, etc., to rethink uh, many things, uh, including how they advertise and also how they survive. As you know, the music industry is completely upside down because of, of this very phenomenon. Uh, but for games, it has actually created very interesting frontiers to, to go to. And uh, for me, that is, has been a very interesting time to shift my energies into that as well. So my upcoming venture is based on that, that new path. Um, so it is uh, the, the, the core idea being to create uh, virtual online worlds where, where uh, uh, users define their, their environment around them. But coming, I do that coming from a standpoint of a entertainment person that has been working on games for several number of years. So there is a unique angle that I can personally bring with my colleagues into that kind of a thinking, and that's what I'm interested in.